automobile, how to set up and play. First thing you'll do is lay out the game board. You'll set out your turn marker. The game's going to be played over four turns. You'll have a turn sequence marker. You're going to randomize the initial selection order. I'm setting this up for a three-player game. You're going to set out the markers for the executive decision area, a closed factory marker, advertising markers, and discount markers. You're also, for each of the characters in the game, set out the prescribed number of cubes for each character, as well as any tokens that represent special powers. Next, create the supply of money for the game. You can use the paper money that comes with the game. I'm using poker chips. You can also create the supply of R&D cubes, closed factory markers, lost cubes, and lost discs. These represent five lost cubes. Next, you'll put all the demand tiles inside of the bag. These range values from two through five. Each player is going to start with $2,000, all of their car tokens, their factory markers, a parts factory, their salesman tokens, their R&D cubes. This is based on the player count. So in a three-player game, players will start with five R&D cubes. In a four-player game, they'll have four R&D cubes. And if this was the full five-player game, only three R&D cubes to start. And finally, they'll get a loan marker. At any time in the game, a player can take a loan and place their marker there. They'd immediately get $500 from the bank. They can have up to two loans. If they took a second loan, that would be another $500 from the bank. At the end of the game, each of the loans have to be paid back at $600, as well as each round, players are gonna have to pay interest on their loans. There are three types of cars in the game. There are the luxury cars, the mid-class cars, and the mass market cars. You can see the colors correspond to the factory spaces on the game board. So as we look at the luxury car space, the first luxury space doesn't appear until here. The first four spaces on the game board correspond to the mid-market cars, and you can see this one corresponds to the mass market cars. The first part of each turn is for each player to draw tiles. In turn one of the game, each player is just gonna draw one demand tile out of the bag, but in turns two, three, and four, each player is gonna draw two tiles from the bag. They're gonna keep this secret, so they'll have knowledge of the tile they drew, but all the tiles won't get revealed until later in the turn. Once players have drawn their tiles, we now go to select characters. We're going to do this in the selection order here. So blue would select first, then red, then yellow. They can select any of the available characters. Ford provides one R&D cube, and you can build one extra factory, either before or after one of your main actions. Kettering only offers three R&D cubes. Sloan offers one cube, but he allows you to have your lost points at the end of the round. Howard lets you sell two cars during one of the turn sequences. Durant offers one cube and allows you to build a new factory immediately. So if a player selects Durant, they actually build in an unoccupied spot right away. And then Chrysler has two R&D cubes and then here you're able to discard your lost points equal to the round number. So blue has to select first. Let's say they choose Howard. Red decides to go to Sloan. And yellow decides to go to Ford. Players now immediately take the R&D cubes associated with their box. And now this becomes the new turn order for the remainder of the round. Players can also take any special power markers to remind them to use them before the end of the turn. Once players select their characters, we now move to the first action round. This is going to happen in character order. So yellow would take an action, red would take an action, blue would take an action. We would advance to the second action round, again yellow, red, blue, and then we would advance to the third action round for yellow's third action 
then red, then blue. So over the course of one turn, players are going to get three actions. Since there's four rounds in the game, players are, are going to have a total of 12 actions throughout the game. So on a player's action round turn, they have five choices. They can build one or two factories in one space. They can produce cars in their chosen spaces. They can place up to three salesmen in the showroom. They can shut down a production space, or they could take two R&D cubes. For each of the three action rounds, they can repeat actions. The simplest one is to take R&D cubes. Those simply come from the supply. Player would get two R&D cubes. They would get added to their supply. There is no limit per player, but players are limited by the amount of R&D cubes in the supply. The next action a player can take is to build one or two factories in one production space. There can only ever be one player per space, and whenever you're advancing technology, you have to pay R&D cubes. This is the first eligible space in the game, so to build here, a player would have to pay one R&D cube. If they wanted to advance two spaces forward, it would be one plus two, so this would be three R&D cubes. If they wanted to advance further, it'd be one plus two plus three. This would be six R&D cubes. So you simply follow that model based on how far you'd like to advance technology. Let's say the player just wants to build here, so they pay one R&D cube and they can build one or two factories. So this player would pay their one R&D cube to the bank, they built their two factories, the factory cost is listed on the production space, so each factory in this space would cost 200 each, so the pet player paid $400 to the bank. Next is the red player in turn order. Let's say they also want to build a factory. So they look for an empty spot. They can only pick one production space to build one or two factories. Let's say they'd like to advance to here. So we know it would be one plus two. They'd have to pay three R&D cubes to build factories here. So the player pays their R&D cubes to the bank. One of the two factories can be a parts factory. The parts factory always costs $500. So the regular factory would have cost three plus the parts for five. So the player would pay $800 to the bank to build these two in this spot. Next is the blue player. Let's continue the example with building factories. Any skip spaces do not cost R&D. So this player can build in this skip space without paying any of the white cubes. They would still have to pay the factory cost but let's say they want to advance. They want to be the first one to get into a mass market space. So we know this would be one plus two. This would be three R&D cubes here. And then in addition, they'd have to pay $300 per factory. So they pay their three R&D cubes. And let's say they only want to build one factory in this space. They pay their $300 to the bank. Once all players have completed their first set of actions, we'll move to the second action round. Let's say the yellow player wants to build another factory. This is a skip space. So they want to build one factory in that spot. So it's not going to cost any R&D cubes. They're simply going to pay $350 to the bank to build that one factory. Also, they had the Henry Ford power. So they can actually turn in the marker and they can build one extra factory. This is before or after their main action. And their main action does not have to be building a factory but they're gonna do this after their main action. They can build one extra factory in a spot that they already occupy. So since they occupy this, they can build one additional factory. They still have to pay the factory cost to the bank, the 350, but they can add an additional factory to that spot. And that was their character power. Next is the red player. And now let's talk about another of the main actions you can choose, and that's producing cars in your chosen spaces. So for each production space, everywhere where you have a factory, you can decide whether to run that factory or not. The red player only has a factory in this spot, and we can see it's a mid-market factory. So we consult this table here. So to produce cars, it's gonna be $70 each in a mid-market factory, and then based on the number of factories you have, provides the minimum and maximum number of cars that can be produced. Since this player only has one factory, if they decide to turn this factory on, they have to at least produce one, 
and the most they can produce is three. Since they also have a parts factory, parts factory reduces the cost, the manufacturing cost of each car produced by 20. So instead of paying 70 per car, they only have to pay 50 per car. So let's say they produce the maximum based on having one factory. They're going to produce three cars at $50 each. So they pay $150 to the bank and they would add three cars to that space. Next is blue. Let's say they also want to produce cars. Again, they only have one eligible factory space. They only have one factory and it's for mass market. So we can see per car it's going to be $50. With one factory they can produce between one and four. Let's say they produce four. So they'd pay 200 to the bank and add four cars to that space. So Blue Player added their produced cars. That completes the second action round. We go to the third and final action round, always in character order. So the yellow player realizes that they better produce some cars. They have two eligible production spaces where they have factories. They can decide to activate one or the other or both of them. Let's start with this one. They have two factories for mid-market. So we can see it's going to be $70 per car. If they activate that factory, they have to at least produce four and the maximum is seven. Let's say they produce seven at 70. They pay their $490 to the bank and they would add seven cars to that spot. On this one, they decide, you know what? I am going to activate that production spot, but I'm only going to produce the minimum. I'm going to produce four cars in that spot at 70. So I'll pay $280 to the bank and add my four cars to that spot. Next is the red player. One of the other actions you can take on your turn is to shut down an entire production space. You would receive your factory values back, less $100 for each factory. You're also able to discard half of your lost cubes, half of the black cubes rounded up. The red player doesn't have any black cubes at the moment, but they do wanna shut down this production space. So they would get the $500 they paid for their parts factory less 100. So they'd get 400 back for the parts factory and they'd get only 200 back for the regular factory. It would be the 300 minus 100. So they would take both of these factories off of the board. They would get the money for each factory less 100 each and they would put a closed factory marker on that, on that spot. Any cars produced on that spot get to remain. Next is blue, and they want to demonstrate the one action we haven't seen yet, and that's to place up to three of your salesmen in the showroom. So you can place up to three, one, two, or three, in any of the three showrooms. Typically, the middle showroom gives you the most flexibility because when we get to that phase later, your salesmen can always go in the row they're on or an adjacent row. So this player is going to decide to place just two of their salesmen in this showroom. Once we've completed the third action round, we now go to the sell cars via Howard. So this is only for the player if there was one that selected the Howard character. At this point, they must sell two of their cars and they would get the full value for those cars. So this player only has these. We can see their mass market cars and they would receive the full value. So they would get $200 from the bank for these two cars. This will not affect the public demand, so these get returned to that player's supply now. So once the Howard player sold any two cars, we now can sell via the distributors. Again, we would go here to the showroom. This would happen in character order, so a yellow player would get to go first, but they don't have any salespeople here. Neither does red, but we can see blue has a salesperson. So blue can decide to move their salesperson to one of these eligible boxes. The number indicates which round this box is eligible for. So these boxes here are eligible in rounds one through four. These boxes are not eligible until we start round two through round four. And these boxes are only eligible in rounds three and four. So let's say the blue player decides to slide right down there because they have a mass market car to sell. So we can put that right there. We would now, they can only do one at a time, so we'd go back in character order, but we can see yellow doesn't have a decision to make, red doesn't have a decision to make, so now it's blue again, and they're gonna slide to another eligible box there, 
and move a car to the full sales price. At this point, you would collect your money for your sold cars. So again, Blue would receive $200. And these are also not going to affect the public demand so they can get returned to the player's supply. At the end of this process, if there were any unused salesmen in any of these showrooms, per salesman, players are gonna to have to take one black loss cube. So let's say the blue player, on their turn, they put out three salesmen instead of two. If there was no eligible spot to move them to, or they had no cars to sell, the salesman was underutilized. So they would have to take a black cube for that salesman and that would just get returned to their supply now. After we sell via distributors, we now move on to the executive actions. We're gonna do these in character order. So starting with the yellow player, they would get their first choice of these available actions. One of the choices, and there's only one available, is a player can shut down a production space. This works just like the normal action. You would shut down an entire production space you would get your factory values, less $100 each, and you would also be able to discard half of your lost cubes rounded up. Next are the advertising markers. You have to buy the leftmost first. You have to pay the R&D cubes. So if all three are available, the first player to select one of these would have to pay two R&D cubes, and they immediately place this on one of their production spots. And you can ever only have one advertising marker per space on the game board. We'll see the benefit of these when we get to selling via the demand tiles. Basically a space with an advertising marker on it will let you sell one additional car than normal. The final type of executive decision are these discount markers. They don't have a cost and the first player that gets here can take the one with two. When these are taken, they immediately get placed in one space. And just like the advertising markers, during selling via demand tiles, they're going to allow the player to sell one additional car. The problem is it's going to be sold at a discounted rate. It's also important to remember that luxury cars can never be discounted, and each space can only be advertised or discounted once. So first player to decide is yellow. Now players do have the option to pass at any point during the executive actions and secure their placement for selection order the next round. But let's say yellow doesn't want to pass, they want to get an advertising marker, they have to buy the leftmost first, so they pay the R&D cubes back to the supply, and they can place this now on one of their production spaces. Let's say they place it there. Next is the red player. They also want to get an advertising marker, so they'll play one R&D cube to the supply, and they'll place it in one of their spots. Next is blue. They don't think they need any of the powers. They have no cars left to sell. So they're actually just gonna pass so they can select characters first in the next turn. Next is yellow player again. They decide instead of giving a, getting an advertising token, they wanna get these two discount tokens. They have to be placed in the same space. And this is the only eligible space because remember each space can only be advertised or discounted once. So they put both of these discount tokens in the same space. Next is red. They decide to pass to secure second in selection order next round. So all that's left is yellow. So, so they can select some of the remaining, but we can see they have no more eligible spaces for advertising or discount markers. They still can close a production space with that token, but let's say they decide not to use it and then they go into that third spot. After all players have passed during executive decisions, we're now going to sell via demand tiles. The first thing we'll do is all players will reveal their drawn tile, and this will determine the demand based on the round of the game and the car type in either the first or the second row. And since this was the first round of the game, players only drew one tile each from the bag. So added together, that's going to determine the demand for the mid-market cars. So we would just move these over here and we can see there's a total demand of 10 from the public for mid-market cars. If, for example, this was round two, three, or four, players would have drawn two tiles out of the bag at the start of the turn. So all tiles would get revealed. Let's say, for example, this was the yellow player's tiles. They drew a four and a four. 
the high tile from each player will be associated with this top row. So added together, this will determine the demand for mid, mid, mass, mass, based on the round number. Additionally, you can see in the fourth turn of the game, on top of the sum of these tiles, you'll draw one additional tile from the game bag now to determine the total demand for mass market cars. The lower tile drawn by each player will determine the demand for the car type in this second row. So starting in round two, the sum of this would have been the demand for the mass market. In rounds three and four, added together will be the demand for the mid market. And then in rounds three and four, you can see at this point, you would simply just draw one tile from the game bag to determine the total demand for luxury cars. And again, you do that in round four. Once you've determined the public demand for each of the three car types, you're now ready to sell cars via these demand tiles. Since this is the first round of the game, we know there's only public demand for mid-market cars. There is no public demand for luxury or mass market, but the procedure would work the same. You would start with the luxury cars, then the mid-market, then the mass market, following this selling procedure. For each car type, we always start with the most technologically advanced space on the game board with cars in it. So this spot, each space is going to be allowed to sell one car. We can see these cars are not discounted, so it's going to go to the full sales price. Normally, after that space sold one car, we'd go to the next space and it would sell one car. Then the third space. But we see there's an advertising marker in this spot. That allows this space to sell one additional car before we move to the next space. Here we can see this space can sell one car. It also has an advertising marker, so it can sell an additional car. We move to the next space. This space is discounted, so it can sell one car as normal, but because of the discount marker, it has to go into the discounted sale price. Since it has two discount markers, it can sell an additional two cars before we move back to the spaces. But again, they all have to go into the discounted sales box. You are going to keep cycling through all of the spaces, selling one car plus the additional car if there are markers, until the total demand is met. So now that we're back here, we know that this space can sell two cars and it's going to be at full value. We can check one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's still not at the total demand. So we can go here and this space would sell that final car and that would meet the total demand of 10 cars from the public. So even though this space has a car left, it does not get an opportunity to sell. Once the demand has been met, now players will collect their revenue based on the number of cars multiplied by the sales price, either the full price or the discounted price. So this player would get $300, 100 each for each of those three cars, and they would get 150 each for those four cars. The red player would get 150 each for these three cars. The sold cars at that point would simply go back to the player's supply. One important thing to remember, players are limited based on their car tokens. So keep that in mind when you're producing cars during the action rounds. Once we've sold via demand tiles for each of the three car types, we're now ready to move to the losses phase. Players will first receive one loss cube for each unsold car. The unsold cars can go back into their supply, but now they've got to take the black loss cubes. Next, players are going to get penalized one black cube for each factory space they're behind the current technology. So you would do this for each of the three car types. We can see there's no luxury factories on the board yet. This is the only mass market factory on the board and it is the current technology. So there are no loss cubes for this. Now let's go to mid market. We can see this is the current technology, so no loss cubes. This is one space behind the current technology. So it's equal to one loss cube. There's no players here anymore since that was closed down. So no players have to take it, but we still count it. And this is two factory spaces behind the current technology one, two. So the yellow player would have to take two black cubes. After players have taken all their black cubes from unsold cars and factory spaces behind the current technology, before we pay the round penalty for those, 
Always remember, if you took the power of Sloan, you get to now discard half of your black cubes, round it up. And if you had Chrysler, you get to discard black cubes equal to the round number. So in round one, you'd get to discard one black cube. If this was round four, you'd get to discard four black cubes. Now players have to pay for each of their black cubes based on the round number. In round one, each black cube will cost the player $10, $20 in round two, $30 in round three, and $40 per cube in round four. The cubes never get discarded. The only times you're actually able to discard your black cubes are when you're shutting down production spaces or exercising the character actions at the end of a turn. It's also at this point that all players have to pay interest on any loans that they've taken out. It's $50 per loan. Loans can never be repaid during the game. They're only repaid at the end of the game for $600, but during this phase cycle, each loan taken out will cost $50 of interest. Once all players have paid their losses and interest, we're now ready to do the end of turn sequence. This is basically just resetting the board. Take all the executive markers and put them back in their section. Put all the tokens for the characters and reset the number of cubes associated with each character. Next, return any demand tiles back to the bag for reuse. Any salesmen that were used now slide back to their showroom spot to the right for each of the three car types. We'll reset the sequence marker back to the beginning and we'll advance the turn marker to the next round. At the end of the fourth turn, players will get their full value for all of their factory tokens on the board. So you would take the number of factories multiplied by the cost on the board, the full value. Players will also have to pay $600 back per loan taken most money wins the game. If there's a tie, you look at this final selection order from the passing decisions. And that should be everything you need to set up and play Automobile.